Hello grade 11 chemistry learners, in today's video we will be looking at redox reactions. This will be an introduction and a basic overview of redox reactions. It's very important to watch this video and then to check out the links in the description box below for links to the playlist for other videos that go more in depth on each of the subtopics that I will mention in this video. Let's jump right in, but remember to subscribe to Miss Martin's Maths and Science if you haven't yet so I can help you get the best possible marks for physical sciences and maths. Let's jump right in. I want to start off by reminding you about ionic bonding. Now remember, when we have ionic bonding occurring, it involves a transfer of electrons. We have a metal, a non-metal, you learned about this in grade 10, and this year, and what essentially happens is that my metal over here, atom number one, has an electron over here. What it does is it gives away, it loses an electron, that electron is transferred to atom number two, which gains that electron, okay? Once this happens, we form a positively charged object or particle, a negatively charged object or particle, and they attract, that's ionic bonding. Now, redox reactions involves the transfer of electrons. And we can contrast this with acid-base reactions, which you may or may not have done this year already. But acid-base reactions involve the transfer of protons or hydrogen ions, H plus ions, protons. Redox reactions involves the transfer of electrons, which are, as you know, negatively charged particles. A large number of redox reactions take place in aqueous or aqueous solutions, but they're not limited to these types of solutions. They don't have to occur in them. And a lot of students, when I say redox reactions, what are you thinking? A lot of my students say oxygen. A lot of them do involve oxygen, and that is how we get rust, like you see on this picture, but not all of them involve oxygen. That's why when you are asked to define a redox reaction, you need to define it in this way, please. A reaction where electrons are transferred. And the word redox reactions actually tells us a lot of information. As you can see, I highlighted this piece of the word in red, the red part of the word. And this stands for reduction. And the ox part of the word stands for oxidation. Now, these two words are super important. If I say that reduction has occurred or something has been reduced, what that means is that thing has gained electrons. It has gained or accepted electrons. If I say oxidation has occurred or something has been oxidized, what it means is that that substance has lost electrons. And one way that you can remember it that I always use, there are other ways, but oil rig. Oil means oxidation is loss. Oxidation is loss. Remember loss of what? Loss of electrons. Rig means reduction is gain. Gain of what? Gain of electrons. So that's how I remember what oxidation is and what reduction is in terms of electron transfer. If you quickly take a look at this example, which we will revisit in a few minutes, you can see we've got sodium and chlorine. Now, remember, these are the Lewis dot diagrams that you draw using the valence electrons or the electrons in the outermost orbital. If you've forgotten how to do that, go check out the videos in my playlist on Lewis dot diagrams and chemical bonding. But sodium has one valence electron and chlorine has seven valence electrons. Now, what this means is that in order to reach a complete or full outer orbital or energy level, sodium has to lose that one electron then it reaches full outer energy level. And chlorine needs to gain one electron to reach octet structure, eight electrons, then it has a full outer energy level. So what happens is basically sodium loses that electron, it gives it away, and remember, we said that oxidation is loss of electrons. So what that means is sodium is oxidized, it lost an electron, and chlorine gains that electron. And remember, reduction is gain of electrons. So chlorine is reduced. And why does this process happen? The two elements want to bond with each other and reach a full outer energy level structure. So 
Redox reactions, oxidation, reduction, redox, they take place simultaneously, which means at the same time. One substance or chemical is reduced, another is oxidized, and as I said, sometimes oxygen is involved, but not always. Now, here is a very important summary of definitions for you that you need to know. So, first one we went through, second one and third one we went through, sort of. So oxidation is the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. So if you are asked to define oxidation and reduction in terms of electron transfer, the first little piece of these definitions, that's how you'll do it. However, you can also define oxidation and reduction in terms of something called an oxidation number. We will get into more detail about oxidation numbers in another video, but oxidation numbers, that's closely related to the valency or the charges of a substance. If we see an increase in oxidation number, it means that the substance has been oxidized oxidation has been taken place. If we see a decrease in oxidation numbers, it means that the substance has been reduced. Reduction has taken place. Very, very important. I will show you in a second again about oxidation numbers more or less, but full on video in the playlist. Then we have oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Now, this is how I always teach it to my students. If you are oxidized, you are the reducing agent. If you are reduced, you are the oxidizing agent. So think opposites go together. So if you read this definition for oxidizing agent, that is the substance that is reduced. If you are the reducing agent, that is the substance that is oxidized. So these are the terms that need to go together in your brain. If oxidation takes place, you say that the substance is oxidized, it is also called the reducing agent. If reduction has taken place, the substance is reduced, it is also called the oxidizing agent. If we take a look at this example that you see on the screen, we've got potassium plus chlorine, and that forms potassium chloride, very similar to my example earlier with sodium. Potassium, if you can see, I don't know if it's clear here, but potassium has one valence electron. Chlorine has seven. Potassium will give away that electron. So potassium loses the electron. As you can see, and I will go over this later, but the oxidation number of potassium was zero. And in this molecule, it's plus one. So what happened to the number? It went from zero to one. It increased. The oxidation number increased, which means oxidation took place. It means potassium is oxidized. It means that potassium lost electrons. Now think about it like this, if you lose electrons, remember electrons are negative, if you lose something that is negative, you become more positive, which is why the oxidation number goes from zero to plus one. You're losing the negative stuff, you're losing one electron, so you become more positive, you go to plus one. And remember, if you are oxidized, you are also called the reducing agent. So potassium, K, is the reducing agent. If we look at this over here, let's look at what reduction is happening over here, what has been reduced. We can see that chlorine had seven valence electrons over here. It gained an electron from potassium. The electron went this way. When, because chlorine gains electrons, we say that it is reduced. So Cl is reduced. And remember, if you are reduced, you are the oxidizing agent. And reduction is the gain of electrons. If you gain negative things, electrons, you become more negative. So your oxidation number goes from zero to negative one. It all fits together. It all makes sense. Now, we will go over oxidation numbers in more detail in another video, but we can use oxidation numbers to help us determine what substance is oxidized and what is reduced. So I will teach you the rules in a separate video. Look at the links down below. But I'm telling you now, the oxidation number for sodium is zero. The oxidation number for chlorine is zero. When they stand alone, it's a rule. When they're in a compound, sodium has an oxidation number of plus one because it's in the first group. Again, this is a rule. Chlorine 
is a halogen. It has an oxidation number of zero, I mean, negative one, okay? Again, it's a rule. We will do this in a separate video. Together, plus one, minus one, it must give me zero because NaCl, sodium chloride, is a neutral compound. Again, sodium goes from zero to plus one. It's an increase in oxidation number. Therefore, sodium is oxidized. Chlorine goes from zero to negative one. It's a decrease in oxidation number, so chlorine is reduced. Now, once we know what is oxidized and what is reduced, we can write something called a half reaction. So remember, we've said the following. Sodium is oxidized. It's the reducing agent. Oxidation is loss of electrons. So when we have half reactions, we have, these are half reactions. So with an arrow, it's like a little, this is like, it looks like this like a reaction, there's a reactant, arrow, products. Half reactions, we get an oxidation half reaction and a reduction half reaction. Now, the oxidation half reaction shows what happens when oxidation takes place. So oxidation half reaction shows the loss of electrons. So what I mean is the following. We start off with sodium, Na. Then what happens? It loses electrons. After it loses electrons, so we use the arrow, it was sodium, then it becomes, we use an arrow, after it loses an electron. Remember, sodium has one valence electron, so it'll lose one electron. If you lose something that is negative, you become positive. It forms the Na plus ion, the sodium ion with a charge of plus one. It's also in group one, so it makes sense that its valency is plus one. Now, how did it become Na plus? it lost an electron. So we have to show it lost the electron. When you see, and I said this to my grade 11s, it helps it make it a bit easier for them. When you see electrons on the right-hand side of the arrow, it means oxidation. It means that the half reaction is representing oxidation. And the reason why is because it is losing electrons. It's giving that electron away. It's no longer part of the sodium anymore. It's given it away. Then we have the reduction half reaction. So what's happening here is Cl is reduced, which means it gains electrons. The Cl gains that electron. That's why I say Cl plus the electron gives me Cl minus. If you gain a negative, you become negative. You get a charge of minus. You gain one electron. You get a charge of one minus or minus one. And generally, moving forward in future videos, when we do redox reactions, we're going to learn how to use table 4A or 4B, which looks like this. So we'll go into this table in more detail in future videos, like I said, but essentially this lists a whole bunch of half reactions. Now they are written, it's very difficult to see on this version of the table, but they're written with double arrows and that's because the reaction can be read this way or this way. So if I pick one of them from the table, for example, the magnesium half reaction, I can either write the half reaction this way, which means it'll look like this, or I can write the half reaction the other way, which means it'll look like this. Please note that when I write half reaction, so a reduction half reaction or oxidation half reaction, this represents one half reaction here, this represents the other half reaction at the bottom of here. Take note how I always use a single arrow. This is very important all the way up to matric. I know it's written with double arrows on the table, but you need to use a single arrow. So think about it carefully. Pause the screen if you must. Which of these two, number one or number two, which of these represents an oxidation half reaction and which one represents a reduction half reaction? Think about it. I hope that you said that this one at the bottom represents the oxidation half reaction because oxidation is loss. Oil, oxidation is loss of electrons. Electrons are on the right-hand side. And this one represents the reduction half reaction because reduction is gain of electrons. The Mg2 plus ion is being reduced. The Mg2 plus ion is gaining these two electrons to form magnesium. So how you would write this actually, if I had to ask you what substance is oxidized, you would say that magnesium is oxidized. It's also called the reducing agent. And that is what's taking place in this reaction over here. And if you look at this reaction over here, you would say that Mg2 plus is reduced. Not just Mg, Mg2 plus 
is reduced. Why? Because Mg2+, the magnesium ion, is the thing that is actually accepting the electrons. And remember, reduction is gain of electrons. So that means that Mg2+, is the oxidizing agent. I hope that the terminology is starting to become a little bit more familiar to you. Don't stress out about this table. This table is always given to you in your exams, and I will teach you how we use the table. In other videos in the playlist, I also go over how to do oxidation numbers, the rules, how to determine what is oxidized, what is reduced, how to write half reactions, how to balance half reactions using the table. And we look at different types of redox reactions. I hope to see you in another video very, very soon. Bye, everyone.